Welcome once again to the Sage and thank you for being with us. Thank you because without you, this show would indeed be meaningless. And so each week that you join us, we are grateful and we feel privileged. Welcome once again. Today's show is a continuation of the past few weeks and months in which we have reflected on our collective and powerful will to make our country, our great country, a better one. This we first demonstrated when we all recently trooped out to vote, passionate about selecting our leadership, but making our country a great one doesn't just start and end with issues of leadership. Each and every one of us has a responsibility. And so we started this series that are looking at some of the key areas of responsibility, where if we each, each citizen of this country, do our best, we will indeed make our country a better place, a country where our common bounty, abundant common bounty, can be more equitably distributed and get to all of us. Working together, we can make our country take its place, its rightful place in history. And so in the previous episodes, we had looked at issues of family, in nation building. We had looked at issues of the young people's role in nation building. We looked at religion in nation building. We looked at the issue of creative arts and their power to energize nation building. Today we go to another very, very important sector or topic, the issue of education. How can education be of strategic importance in this our quest to build our nation? Why education? I think as I'm not I'm sure nobody is asking that question because it is to my mind obvious why education is important. What is education after all? Education is all about imparting knowledge, imparting information. It can be formal or informal, but the very, but the point is that for us to learn in whatever area it is, it is by a process of education. And so in whatever areas we need to progress in our country, we all get there. We teach our young, we teach all of us, our young, our old, everybody, through the process of education, effective education. We need to build the structures. We need to do it efficiently and practice it so that the results of that education is a country that grows and is strong in its various areas. In fact, I don't think that if we do not educate effectively, that we will really ever progress. And so education is critical. It is critical for our young in teaching them to be good citizens, to be efficient professionals or whatever, but also for all of us, as knowledge expands, as we learn the various arts of living, everything is through the process of education. And so to discuss this so, so very, very important topic, we have a really wonderful person on set with us today. It's such a privilege to come and discuss what her experience 
in using education to foster our nation has been. Stay with us. When we come back, we'll introduce a wonderful guest to you. A real hidden treasure. Welcome once again to The Sage. Ah, we've come to the truly exciting part of the show. I promised you that we have a treasure. A treasure on this topic of education here with us on set today. Please join me in welcoming Professor Echendu Dolly Adema to The Sage. Thank you very much. <laughs> it's my pleasure being here. Mm. I am thrilled. I am thrilled to have Professor Adema on set for many, many reasons. I must admit immediately that I have known her a long time and have every reason to believe she's one of the most competent in these things we're talking about. I can only do her justice by reading a little bit of her bio so that you understand from where I'm coming. Professor Echendo Adema is a professor of community medicine through public health. She is a lecturer par excellence who has taught for many, many years, teaching both undergraduate and postgraduate students in medicine. She has a string of qualifications. I mean, I can shuttle them out. MBBS, MPH, MFPH, MD, M FMCPH, FWACP, those are colleges, postgraduate colleges that she's a member, as well as the FNA M M Med. She is also the a fellow of the Nigerian Academy of Medicine. She's a fellow of the West African College of Physicians. She's a fellow of the National Postgraduate Medical College of Nigeria, a professor, as I said before, of community medicine and of public health. She's a lecturer um, in Namdi Azikiwe University, Oka, Anambra State. Um, she's been a, the past head of community medicine in that distinguished institution, a past coordinator of primary health care, a past coordinator of the residency training in the university, a past faculty secretary of the West African College of Physicians, a past faculty chairman of the West African College of Physicians Nigerian chapter. She's an examiner for the West African College of Physicians. She's a member of the accreditation team of several teaching hospitals in this country. Um, she's a member of the Federal Government Technical Working Group on Sexually Transmitted Diseases. She is currently the Director of, for Sustainable Development Center of Namdi Azikiwe University. And trust me, we shall bring her back on set to discuss the work of that wonderful center. Um, she's been a consultant and is a consultant for several international agencies, including UNFPA, CEDA, WHO. She's a past national president of the Medical Women Association of Nigeria. And in addition to these many, many distinguished professional um, achievements, accomplishments, um, it is with pride, I also so say, that it doesn't end with professional things. She is a traditional title holder. She's an Iyom Ugo Di Ebube. Iyom Ugodi Ebube, let me say it properly, mm -hmm. meaning the glorious eagle in her hometown, um, Newi, in Anambra State. And she is very happily married to a professor of obstetrics and gynecology, Professor Brian Adema, and they have five lovely children and seven wonderful grandchildren. Um, she's also, let me, uh, again, as I said at the beginning, a wonderful human being to know and associate with. I can say that with authority. Mm -hmm. I have known Professor Adima for many years. She's a kind, gentle um, human being, generous, loyal, in addition to all her professional accomplishments. Professor Adima, it is truly a pleasure 
to have you on set. Welcome. Thank you so much. Thank you very much for your kind words. <laughs> and thank you for bringing me to this stage. Uh, and so, it's such a pleasure because I know I have watched you grow. I feel like a big sister myself. And let me tell, uh, remind our audience that I am also a public health physician, uh, a previous lecturer. So I feel as if it is a life, you know, it was my other life, you know. So I am so proud and so um, um, sure of the competency um, for which we brought you here on set to talk. How for you? How did you get to where to you know where you are to become? You're a doctor. It takes quite something to be a doctor. You are an accomplished physician with so many many um, degrees that attest to that. You're a seasoned lecturer. You're a woman. How how did it all come to this? Thank you very much, Dr. Ketu Obuago, and I must say. You are indeed a big sister to me, a motivator, a role model. Wow. Okay. Yeah, I had looked up to you in several ways. My education career has been a long, long journey. Um, and it's been a journey with determination, with being focused in what I do, in looking up to people that I see that are role models. In my secondary school days, I said to myself, if I cannot find a way, I will make it myself. It was, it was a bit like a slogan to me. And I was always aiming for the top. They said, what a man can do, a woman can do and do better. So I had looked up to people who had gotten to a very high height in the academic world, in pro professional endeavor too. I grew up in the midst of brothers and sisters who were school teachers. Okay. And I said, I must have another route. I will navigate. I jettisoned the teaching profession at that lower level. Not knowing you will come back to it someday. Oh my goodness. <laughs> that was it. <laughs> so, it has been quite exciting for me, my journey. And I look back and say, to God be the glory, having achieved this so far. Yeah, that's what I can say about my journey, becoming a medical doctor, a specialist in public health, as well as a university professor. Thank you very much for that question. Mm -hmm. I mean, I mean that's wonderful. Um, what you said, you know, embodies it all. Really, there has to be a way. Um, one makes a way. You know, you that that determination that one needs, particularly when you're a woman and you're an African, you know, you know, you're a woman, African, black, we say those are all the things that weigh against you. To, to achieve, it's good for you to, to, to make it, to say it so that all our young viewers and all our viewers out there understand that it is that determ singular determination that gets you where you want to go. Uh, and so thank you. Thank you for demonstrating and sharing um what it took for you to get where you are um and so you are here with us you've kindly consented to come discuss this important issue of education in nation building um we think it's important that's why we're discussing it but what what do you think do you think it, well i think you have two professions that are very crucial here you're a doctor, you're a medical doctor. That in itself is another topic of, for discussion later. The role of the health, of health and health providers in nation building. But in addition to that, you combine that with being a teacher of graduate and postgraduate students. So do you think the role of, your role as a teacher, do you think education is important to nation building? Yeah, education is quite critical for any nation building. Uh, I can describe 
a nation without educated people. Mm -hmm. It's just like preparing a soup, a pot of soup without salt. <laughs> it becomes so tasteless. Absolutely, they cannot perform. There is no way they can perform. So education, which is, by the way, uh, the development of uh, human resources, uh, human capital for the nation, is providing the relevant knowledge, skills, and values to an individual to make the individual to be able to participate fully and meaningfully in the society. So education is quite critical for any national development. Education contributes mainly in the area of um, nurturing responsive citizens for the country, people with civic engagement, people who have critical minds, who can analyze and be quite independent in life. It also helps in, also in our democratic values, as well as helping in inculcating and promoting our good cultural values. So I think in a nutshell, education is quite critical in nation building. Absolutely. Can I, can I capitalize on your experience, your vast experience and say, as you look back in your own career, you know, where in your dealings, um, you can look at it from two different perspectives. Your dealings, first of all, perhaps as an educator, a lecturer, um, where some of you've been able to tangibly do some of these things. When you, yeah, when you talk about nurturing or civic engagement or even the issue of democracy and so on, do you have examples that we can learn from? Actually, as a medical practitioner, uh, come lecturer in the university, uh, my areas, the main thematic areas that I've uh, been engaged in, in areas of uh, clinical services, training and research with innovations. Um, in terms of clinical services, uh, we have, I have along the line been able to provide services at local, state and national levels. Okay. Health services encompassing preventive health care services. In preventive health care uh, services, let's take for example, primary preventive measures, where I've been able to conduct uh, most health education, health promotion exercises, conducting seminars, outreaches, especially in the communities, and impacting very positively on our citizenry. Um, in terms of uh, secondary level of prevention, we've been able to conduct screening exercises, looking at um, cancers of the cervix, cancers of the breast, and other cancers for men, prostates. In my journey as a medical doctor and a leader in one of the non-governmental organizations, Medical Women's Association of Nigeria, we were able to impact a lot to our communities in conducting most of these screening exercises. The program is still ongoing. Then in training, I've, I must say I've had the privilege to train so many generations of medical doctors, both at the undergraduate level and postgraduate levels. And it gladdens one's mind when these people that you have trained have all become big men and women in the society even bigger than you as a professor. It gladdens one's heart to know that you've been able to impact on several lives, making them professionals. Some are even professors now with me, those that I have trained. So it's really an exciting journey to be a medical doctor, a trainer. Apart from the undergraduate training, I've been involved for the past several years in training postgraduate doctors in the specialty of community and public health. As you read in my bio, I belong to both colleges that train 
uh, postgraduate doctors in Nigeria, the West African College of Physicians that spans across beyond Nigeria to all the countries in the West Coast. Uh, so in that college, I've been able to impact on so many postgraduate doctors. I also trained for the National Postgraduate Medical College of Nigeria, uh, producing specialists in public health. And when you see all these people that you have trained, blossoming within and outside the country, it gives one that sense of fulfillment, that sense of joy that I have really impacted on some other people. Being a role model, being a mother, in medical women, we say healing with the love and spirit of a woman. And this has guided my medical practice here in Nigeria and beyond. So in, in the areas of training, I've been able to do this bit. Apart from the training, I'm also involved in research. Currently, I have over a hundred publications. Hold that. Let, let me interrupt you. Hold it. You're about to do research, but before we go there, let me just underscore the importance of you know some of the points you made. Uh, because these are huge achievements. And I, I like to say huge national contributions because these young people that you have trained, some have even become professors and so on, is actually the evidence, concrete evidence. That's your nation building, because that's what nation building is. It is when we can claim with confidence and know for certainty that we have done our bits in producing fine human beings who are skilled and who are contributing to their country. And so we, we laud you and thank you for that. Okay. Um, and I wanted to underscore the importance of that. Mm -hmm. And also when you mentioned the community interventions, which you, um, you have also done in your dual role as a doctor uh, and not just a teacher. Um, it's again, it underscores the important contributions you have made to health. It is a healthy people that make a healthy nation. nation. Yeah. Uh, and so they're beautiful illustrations of what we mean when we say nation building, what we all do, what you are doing in your capacity as a doctor and a lecturer in, in building this nation. So don't mind me, let's go back to your research. Uh, thank you so much. Um, I've been quite involved in conducting researches. Researches, especially in the area I love most, reproductive health care and health management. Yeah, so over the years, I've applied myself so well I've been able to come up with several publications in indexed journals and some technical reports too because in most of the organizations I did uh, work with, as you said in my bio, the UNFPA, WHO, CEDA, I was privileged to have been trained as an international consultant to UNFPA. And that took me to several countries in, uh, in Africa where I had gone to develop their strategic plan on commodity security. And by the way, courtesy of this lady, <laughs> this powerful lady <laughs> that is interviewing me. Ah, you've let the cat out of the bag. <laughs> I recall in 20, 2007, she took me up from my department took me to Cape Town, where we had training as international consultants on reproductive health commodity security. And since then, the door was open for me to do UN job. And this has taken me to countries like the Kingdom of Lesotho, Liberia, Sierra Leone, where I had gone to develop their strategic plans. Even here in Nigeria, I was part of those who developed one of the strategic plans for Nigeria and commodity security. So it's indeed my pleasure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You were one of my star students, so to say. Mm -hmm. um, 
and it, it's it's so good it's so good to see how you have grown um, and the impact you're making in so many many ways in our country today um, as i said before we will we're looking forward to your coming on the show again to discuss your role as the director of the sustainable development center Wow, we have been discussing with no less than Professor Dolly Echendo Adema. And I'm sure you agree with me that it's been a truly, truly informative and interesting discussion. Dr. Adema, a professor of community medicine and public health, a lecturer in the university, has thrilled us as she talked about her many accomplishments, particularly looking at issues of education and medicine in the context of nation building, and talked about what they have done, what she has done in public health that contributed to our nation building, and also what she's done in terms of education in producing manpower, critical manpower, for our health system and for our training institutions. But we're going to hear a lot more from her, from this wonderful lady. And so you will continue to enjoy her as we continue this wonderful discussion. And she goes on next week, be sure you don't miss it, to talk about research her work, her job as a researcher and the impact it's had in nation building in this country and also to share frankly from her heart what she considers to be the problems of our teaching institutions, particularly tertiary institutions in this country. You're going to enjoy it. It's something to look forward to as we conclude this wonderful discussion with Professor Dolly Echendo Adema next week. Be sure you don't miss it. Thank you for having been with us.